Uh, you may or may not be familiar with it. I don't know. And there may be different versions of this. Uh, I'm not trying to just promote this one uh, company, but uh, there's a thing called Muse, uh, a headband that'll uh, yeah. sync with your phone and then it can detect your brain waves. And then you can find out when you're in alpha state, essentially, uh, or the percentage of time you're in alpha state. And, and uh, that was extremely helpful. And then, you know, as we, you know, became aware of, all the science that was just showing that it's really uh, a, a huge miss by humanity not to be teaching kids how to do mind body practices starting in kindergarten all the way through uh, 12th grade. It, uh, we have a United Nations resolution. Everybody can sign the petition uh, to advocate for a non, non mandatory. Uh, suggestive United Nations resolution advocating mind-body education K through 12 in public education worldwide. And what we're advocating is what we call the big five uh, because they have, you know, in some cases, millennia of research behind them, but they have a huge amount of modern uh, medical scientific research. And that's Tai Chi, Qigong, meditation, yoga, and mindfulness. And uh, so as I'm going through all this science, I'm, you know, it, it, it becomes increasingly apparent that what makes them special is that alpha state component. You know, mm -hmm. in Tai Chi, we talk about Wu Wei and flow and things like that. But, you know, from doing Tai Chi and Qigong for 45 years, it's real obvious to me that uh, when I'm in that state, it's alpha state. Uh, because, you get, you know, once, 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 I, once one of my students got me the Muse headband, you know, it was like that's when I realized, oh, okay, that's what this feeling is. And uh, so, uh, so we realize now that, uh, you know, if we get this into public education, it'll be quite easy to de uh, determine whether children are going into off state. And it wouldn't be like we're introducing a foreign concept. Uh, uh, Dr. Spady mentioned that Dr. Bruce Lipton uh, suggested that uh, kids are in alpha state a lot of the time up into about seven years old. And then that's when learning starts to slow down and everything. And we start to get, uh, we, we start to lose touch with that ability to go into alpha state, which again, I think is quite natural because, you know, you were mentioning your experience in nature and how these things and, and some other aspect of this. And I remember when I was a little kid uh, and I would walk in the wheat fields when the wheat was ripe because uh, I lived in a small farming town and I'd walk in the wheat fields and you just have that drone of the wind blowing through those wheat heads. And there was nobody out there but me and my dog, you know, and I realize now looking back, I was I was going into alpha state. It would happen. And then I would come out of it, you know, within a couple of seconds. And I think, wow, what just happened? Where did I go? Uh, you know what I mean? Because I was in, wasn't in the normal state of consciousness. And so you so I've been wanting to ask you, uh, uh, given our our focus, our project is uh, we want to get 100,000 signatures at least. I mean, really, we feel like we should be able to get millions of signatures because mind bodies all over the planet uh, and take it to the United Nations. We're going to contact every UN mission in the world uh, to uh, co-sponsor uh, a resolution for no, uh, non-mandatory uh, mind body education camp suggestion for uh, public education worldwide, and then use that as a vehicle to provide educators all over the world with the science. And we think it should be an easy sell because the science shows that uh, regular meditators, their IQ increases, you know, can increase much, as much as 20 points. And uh, their GRE reading skill increases, their math proficiency skill, their verbal fluency. These are all the things that we want students to be able to do. And, uh, uh, and you know, and in study after study, test scores go up when people practice these things. And so, uh, so we don't think it should be a hard sell. And the uh, UN passed the International uh, Day of Yoga in 2015 with a record number of co-sponsoring nations, 177 co-sponsoring nations. 
And so uh, we feel like the world is ready for something like this because it would save trillions of dollars in saved healthcare costs. If you look at the data, you know, uh, Dr. Herbert Benson put together and also Kaiser Permanente did a 20 year study and they determined that about 70% of the illnesses sending people to their doctors were caused by stress. So we're talking trillions of dollars in savings, not to mention the reduction in global violence and that science is massive as well. So, uh, so yeah, I was just curious to, to get your feel on this, on this project that we're involved in. And uh, uh, we call it the Global Transformation Project because the science shows that's what it would do. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, it seems like it's directed to you, Dr. Penberthy, but really it's directed to the whole planet. <laughs> and that is, if you, could, if you wouldn't mind going back to UVA and uh, letting people know about the global, globaltransformationproject.org. And what we're doing is we're gathering uh, a, a coalition of leading minds in science, health, education, mind, body, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you'll see a lot of names that you'll recognize that have already signed on. Uh, and uh, so as many people in your department at UVA that would be interested in adding their names and bios and what they're signing on to, and you'll see it when you go to the website, but they're signing on to the, uh, the campaign for a United Nations resolution advocating uh, non-mandatory, uh, but just a suggestion of mind-body education for the planet. And then we provide science to them. And uh, so the more, uh, the more academics and researchers in your field that add your names and bios to this coalition, the safer it is for other educators and experts in these fields to go, oh yeah, I can do that too. And then that's how we grow this global movement. Thank you, yes. So thank you. Thank you all for the work you're doing. And and Bill, to your point, I'm happy to share the message about this, um, the, the, the signatures. And uh, I think you're absolutely right. The, the more momentum you get, the more it opens up and frees people to feel like they can do the same. Project. And Dr. Spady, I wanted to thank you for becoming one of the official uh, expert supporters uh, at globaltransformationproject.org. It really means a lot to this, uh, to this project. And so thank, thank you so much for you know, putting your face and your, and your bio uh, where your heart is on this. And, uh, uh, and I encourage everybody to go to globaltransformationproject.org and click on the scientists and educators and health experts that are supporting. These are leading minds in the world that are support that see the absolute common sense of what we're trying to do here. So Dr. Nelson's work is at the heart of the science that Tesla dubbed the most important science in science's history. And it's really, really, uh, Roger, it's my great honor to introduce you. And, uh, and also, uh, again, the book is Connected, The Emergence of Global Consciousness. And uh, Dr. Nelson was the coordinator of research at the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Laboratory at, at Princeton University from 1980 to 2002. And again, direct, it's directed the Global Consciousness Project since its inception in 1997. So thank you so much for being here, Roger. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me and putting together this um, amazing uh, panel. And maybe more importantly, putting so much um, productive energy into um, try, trying to re-educate the world. Basically, we need to learn how to uh, get out from under the stress. Uh, we need to learn how to wor work from the heart to connect with each other and so forth. And I frankly think there's no better way than to start um, young. <laughs> start with this, the really youngest people we can uh, reach. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, on, uh, I'm on the team. I really want um, something like the UN project that you're um, proposing to go through.
Nazareth and for your compassion and love that you are spreading around the world. This is a nice time in Egypt and the Egyptians would like to tell you something, say to you, and say to you something from the Lord. Well, it is a beautiful day for Tai Chi in the park here in Toronto and around the world. Practitioners of the ancient martial art are joined across the globe today for World Tai Chi and Chi Gong Day. On the last Saturday of April, devotees gather at 10 a.m. local time in more than 63 countries to exhibit the simple gentle movement from China. The NGO to educate people on the potential health benefits of proceeds to the project. Joining a worldwide celebration of the Nazi stress and improved overall health, but there's also many studies that have been done um, showing the medical effectiveness of Tai Chi and Qigong in helping many conditions, including heart disease, uh, diabetes, arthritis, digestive disorders, anxiety, um, many other conditions. Tens of thousands of people will have participated by the time the worldwide event wraps up today in Hawaii. And be more in the outside, in the open air. So I do think the Tai Chi is very important in South Africa. Mankind's got lazy. We sit down too much. We're closing our chest. We're playing with cell phones. What we're now doing today is teaching people, taking them back to the roots, educating them the simple, uncomplicated of systems of Tai Chi that anybody can do it. Any person, whether you're black, white, pink or blue, it's got no religion, it's not political. It's just a self-enriching form and everybody benefits from it. On this day, hundreds of cities spanning 80 nations, people came together to breathe together and provide a healing vision for our world. First of all, it's uniting the world. It's a common cause today. It's a World Peace Day, so it's not just a healing day today. It's bringing nations across the globe together, uniting the world together. We're hoping to go to over 100 people's countries streaming. There are hundreds of countries taking part. I'm personally hoping that we can actually break a billion people witnessing World Tai Chi today, from New York, New Zealand, across to Hawaii. More people that see what Tai Chi is about, more people want to get involved in Tai Chi. And in South Africa, the message of this art was heard loud and clear. I think it can help us in terms of our health, since South Africa struggles from diabetes and heart problems and blood sugar levels. So I think it can help the older and younger generation to feel way younger than they usually are. The sports has actually died down. We now experiencing a lot of uh, unhealthy lifestyles. Uh, exposure to Tai Chi can help a lot of people to uh, reap the benefits that Tai Chi brings. Tai Chi uh, teaches you um, self-discipline, healthy lifestyles, and also to respect others in nature. So if we all live with those principles, there can be peace in the world. According to the Harvard Medical School, Tai Chi might well be called medication in motion. I can say after joining in that the practice is so accommodating and energizing that one does feel the immediate health benefits, be it physical or emotional. Julie Shara, CCTV, Johannesburg, South Africa. Princess Diana's funeral was, a, uh, was thought to be 
attended in one way or another by something like maybe a billion or two billion people. Mm -hmm. You heard what I said about random number generators and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you didn't see this picture, which was a prototype for what became the Global Consciousness Project. I asked people to take data, send it to me, put it all together and made the red trace that you can see. It was unlikely with odds of a one in a hundred or so. And that encouraged us to go ahead and to create a network, uh, which ultimately had about 150 or more people hosting one of the devices, these random number generators, um, in various places around the world, signified by the little red spots. Um, the most we ever had running about at one time were about 75, but a lot of people have participated over the years. Now you've seen this picture already. Um, it's a uh, almost typical kind of uh, result. This is what we call a cumulative deviation plot. It just shows the history of the departures from expectation. We predict that they'll, it'll go up. And starting at about nine or so in London, it, it really began going up gangbusters, big time. And um, this sort of um, confirmation of the hypothesis that we set, which is that um, when re really large numbers of people come together, we'll see we'll see some kind of correlation, correlated activity in the GC, in the Global Consciousness Project data. say